In this video, we'll measure the voltage-current relationship for a capacitor. There's a differential relationship between voltage and current for capacitors. So the current through the capacitor is related to the rate of change of the voltage across the capacitor. In order to get meaningful data about this relationship, then, we need to apply a time-varying voltage to the capacitor. After we've done this, we'll take a look at a particular non-ideal property of capacitors, the leakage current. First, just a quick reminder about the theoretical voltage-current relationship for capacitors. If we have a capacitor with capacitance C and apply a voltage difference, V of T, across its terminals, the current through the capacitor is proportional to the rate of change of the voltage. I is equal to C times dV by dt. We'll use two types of time-varying signals to explore this relationship, sinusoidal and triangular waves. Our choices are primarily based on the fact that these signals make the math relatively simple, so it'll be easy to compare our experimental results with our expectations based on the theoretical voltage-current relationship. We'll do sinusoidal signals first, and then just briefly show the result when we apply triangular waveforms. Let's say that we apply a sinusoidal voltage difference to our capacitor. Mathematically, a sinusoid is expressed as A an amplitude times sine of omega times t, where omega is the frequency of the sinusoid in radians per second. In the lab, it's generally easier to work with frequency in cycles per second, or hertz. This means that our sinusoid is going to be written as a times sine of 2 pi times f t, where f is the frequency in hertz. If we substitute this into our voltage-current relationship for capacitors and do the math, we find that the current through this capacitor should be C times A, the amplitude, times 2 pi F times cosine of 2 pi F times T. Graphically, this means that if we apply a voltage sine wave with amplitude A to our capacitor, we should get a current that looks like this through the capacitor. The current is a cosine, so the peaks of the current waveform are a quarter of a wavelength ahead of the voltage waveform. The amplitude of the current is C times 2 pi F times the amplitude of the voltage waveform. We'll use this circuit to experimentally investigate the voltage current relation we determined on the previous slides. We'll use a 100 ohm resistor in series with a 1 microfarad capacitor. We'll apply a sinusoidal voltage to the combination using channel 1 of our waveform generator. We'll measure the voltage across the resistor using channel 1 of our oscilloscope and the voltage across the capacitor using channel 2 of the oscilloscope. The resistor and the channel 1 measurement will be used to estimate the current through the capacitor. The capacitor current is simply the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. We can use a math channel on the oscilloscope to perform this calculation. If we plot the channel 2 voltage and the current, we should be able to experimentally verify the plot I showed on the previous slide. Let's go ahead and do that now. Here's our implemented circuit. Our 100 ohm resistor is here. This is our 1 microfarad capacitor. We're using channel 1 of the arbitrary waveform generator to apply our time varying signal to the resistor. Channel 1 of the oscilloscope is measuring the voltage across the resistor. Channel 2 of the oscilloscope is measuring the voltage across the capacitor. Ground is connected here. The signal we're applying to our circuit is a sinusoidal signal. I'm using a 1 kilohertz frequency and a 3 volt amplitude. Clicking on Run AWG applies the signal to the circuit. Our oscilloscope is set up to show channel 1, channel 2, and I've created a math channel, which is simply channel 1 divided by the resistance, which is 100 ohms. Channel 2 is the blue line. That's the voltage across the capacitor. The red line is the current through the capacitor. We can see that per our expectations, the current is leading the voltage by about a quarter of a wavelength. We can also compare the amplitudes to make sure that we've got the amplitude relationship that we would expect for our theoretical results. We can also check our voltage current relationship using a triangular voltage input to the capacitor. For a triangular wave, the voltage looks like this. The slope or rate of change of the voltage is constant between the peaks, so the current should be constant between the peaks as well. If our rate of change of voltage is delta V over delta T, the current amplitudes are simply C times that slope. We can use our previous circuit with the input change to a triangular wave to verify this. 
The physical circuit that we're using is identical to the one that we did in the previous demo. We just need to change the settings on our waveform generator and our oscilloscope. Let's change our frequency to a lower frequency, 100 hertz, switch to a triangular wave, and apply that signal to the circuit. Clicking Run on the oscilloscope, now our scales on the oscilloscope are poor for the signal that we're using at the moment. Let's change our time base to 10 milliseconds per division. Now we can see our triangular wave. Our current waveform is approximately flat between the peaks, which is what we'd expect. If we wanted to measure these, we can click on the measure button. We can get a maximum value for each. The ratio of these should be as is shown on our previous slide. Finally, we'll look at one particular kind of non-ideal effect, leakage currents. According to our current capacitor model, if we apply an initial voltage across the capacitor and then open circuit the capacitor's ter terminals, that initial voltage will remain across the capacitor forever. The capacitor can only store energy. There's no mechanism for it to dissipate energy. In reality, the capacitor will leak some current from one conductor to the other, which results in an apparent energy dissipation. This leakage effect is typically modeled as a resistance in parallel with an ideal capacitor. Obviously, now if we apply an initial voltage across the capacitor, open circuit these terminals, the energy can still dissipate because current will flow through this internal resistor, which will convert the electrical energy to heat. Next, we'll do a quick demonstration to show the effects of the leakage current. We'll also use this demonstration to illustrate something we mentioned earlier about electrolytic capacitors. The properties of electrolytic capacitors are different depending on the polarity of the capacitor. The leakage current of electrolytic capacitors is one thing that's strongly dependent upon the polarity of the voltage. Here's the circuit we'll use. This is the symbol for an electrolytic capacitor. The anode of the capacitor is here, the cathode is here. We'll apply 5 volts to the circuit to create an initial voltage across the capacitor. We'll then simply unplug our voltage supply to open the switch shown in the circuit. This will create an open circuit across the capacitor terminals. Channel 1 of the oscilloscope will be used to monitor the capacitor voltage as it decays. Finally, we'll reverse the polarity of this capacitor and repeat the test. The decay rates between the two cases should be significantly different. Here's our partial circuit. Here's our current limiting resistor. We're using V plus to apply 5 volts at this resistor's terminal. We're using channel 1 to, apply, to measure the voltage across the capacitor. I'm going to plug this capacitor in so that its anode is connected to the resistor and its cathode is connected to ground. Now let's charge the capacitor up, disconnect the voltage supply, and see what happens. All I need for this is the power supply, which I've already turned on, and the oscilloscope, which I'm going to run now. Notice that I have a very long time base, 5 seconds per division. Clicking on Run, we have an initial 5 volt voltage across the capacitor. Disconnecting V plus causes this voltage to start to decay. The decay rate is essentially a function of that parallel resistance in our model. Eventually, this voltage will decay to zero. It's going down very slowly with the capacitor connected with the correct polarity. Now let's repeat our test with the capacitor terminals reversed. The cathode is now connected to the resistor, and the anode is connected to ground. Clicking Run on the scope, we start out at a 5 volt voltage across the capacitor, Disconnecting the power supply causes the capacitor voltage de to decay. With the terminals reversed, this decay rate is much more rapid than when the capacitor was connected correctly.